This is Electric Universe Eyes, and today I present The Exodus Event by Peter Fairley Clark. In 1950, Emanuel Velikovsky, in his book Worlds in Collision, told of a catastrophic encounter between Earth and Venus that caused not only the ten plagues of Egypt and the Exodus, but also dramatically increased Earth's orbit. It is perhaps unfortunate he called his book Worlds in Collision because electromagnetic forces seem to prevent cosmic bodies carrying a large charge difference from colliding. It would appear that smaller bodies carrying a large charge difference usually explode before contact, the Russian bolide being a recent example, but larger cosmic bodies repel one another. Although many scientists maintain that Velikovsky's theory about major changes of the planet's orbits within the lifetime of mankind was impossible, there were some within the SIS, Robert Bass and Lawrence Dixon, who claimed that nothing in Newton's laws makes it so. While we have read papers by them and others on the possibility of orbit change, we have read none that analyze what happened during the Exodus catastrophe as described in Worlds in Collision. This is our attempt at such an analysis. We are now fortunate in having the benefit of 40 years of SIS research into the solar system and Earth's history as recorded worldwide in mythology, biblical, and other ancient records. Also, space research with probes traversing space and visiting the planets and comets has shown that magnetic fields are everywhere in space and the electricity in space can provide a far more powerful force for change than gravity alone, by a factor of 1,000 billion 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 times, or 10 to the 39th power. Before we look at the catastrophe, let's establish what forces we are dealing with. Earth's mean orbit is 93 million miles from the Sun, which means it travels some 584 million miles per year, or 1.6 million miles a day, at 66,660 miles per hour. Current orbital momentum, mv, is the multiple of this, and its mass, which is 6.1 times 10 to the 20th tons. Venus is currently traveling faster completing its orbit of 422 million miles in 224.7 days at a speed of over 78,000 miles per hour. As its mass is less than Earth at 5 times 10 to the 20th tons, its orbital momentum is currently 96% of that of Earth. We cannot assume that these energy levels were the same prior to the Exodus catastrophe because while a change of direction is the most obvious effect when two moving bodies such as snookerballs strike one another, there is also an exchange of momentum. Furthermore, if both Earth and Venus had the later encounters with Mars, as Velikovsky maintains, these must have involved some exchange of both charge and momentum. For the momentum, let us put aside the question of electromagnetic forces, except to say that it was through those forces that the charge differences and the orbital momentum of the planets were exchanged. Since Earth's rotation is much faster than that of Venus, its influence on the Exodus catastrophe is probably minimal, so we will ignore any changes in this analysis. Pre-Catastrophe Situation According to Velikovsky, prior to the Exodus, Venus had an eccentric orbit which went inside Earth's orbit at its perihelion, and as it approached Earth, it looked like a comet with an illuminated head and long tail. Imagine seeing this in the sky by day and night until it reaches perhaps as much as 20 times the size of the moon. Velikovsky thought Jupiter had given birth to Venus early in the second millennium BC, he said this twice in Worlds in Collision, first in Part 1, Chapter 8, under the section titled The Four-Planet System, then again in Chapter 10 in the last paragraph of the section, Venus Becomes the Morning Star. Prior to the Exodus that he dated to around 1450 BC, Velikovsky said that Venus had been involved in or caused both the Sodom and Gomorrah and Job catastrophes. In Part 2, Chapter 5 of Worlds in Collision, he identified Venus and Mars as the Archangels Michael and Gabriel, both of whom featured in the Sodom and Gomorrah story. In Part 1, Chapter 10, he identified Venus as Maseroth, 
that, quote, did not appear in its seasons in the book of Job. Prior to the Exodus, Earth and Venus were clearly orbiting the sun in the same direction and at similar speeds. The Catastrophe 1. Cosmic Features of the Plagues of Egypt When the Earth enters the tail of the comet Venus, first fine dust particles fell in all the land of Egypt, then dust changes to larger particles as it plunges deeper into the comet tail. A blazing sticky substance falls and runs along the ground. Falling meteorites and liquid fire with lightning and thunderous roar. Then followed days of darkness. 2. Terrestrial features of the plague. The Nile runs red. All fish die and the water is undrinkable. The Nile swarms with frogs, gnats, and fly swarms. Cattle die. There are boils on man and beast thunder and lightning and liquid fire that runs on the ground. Earth exits the comet's tail. Hail and fireballs stop falling. A strong east wind brings locusts to devour all remaining vegetation, then changed to a strong west wind for seven days. Then darkness for three or nine days while the angel of the Lord passed over. A great earthquake shook the whole world and slew the chosen of Egypt all the firstborn. 3. The Crossing After the passing of the Lord, Moses gathered his people, and guided by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, Moses led his people, 600,000, out of Egypt for several days and encamped on the shore of the Red Sea. Exodus thirteen twenty one. The angel of the Lord in the pillar of cloud then moved from before the host of Israel to behind them. Exodus fourteen nineteen. The great ball of the comet approaches again. Exodus fourteen twenty one. A strong east wind drove the waters back, and the Hebrews crossed over on dry land. The Egyptians drowned when they followed later. Four. Battle in the sky. Velikovsky says incessant electrical discharges occurred between the tail of the comet and the Earth between the two close approaches. The comet tail is initially like an encircling serpent, but later it distorts with legs and many heads, looking like a ferocious animal. The ferocious animal appears to swallow the comet, but the brilliant, red-faced and bald globe bursts out, tearing the monster to pieces. Gas dust, and other matter of the comet's tail envelops the earth. The globe of the comet withdrew but did not break away. 5. Manna and the Log Giving On the sixteenth day of the second month after leaving Egypt, the glory of the Lord, the head of the comet, appeared in the cloud. Exodus 16.10 The next day the dew on the ground, when dried, became edible bread of heaven, or manna. Three days after the third new moon following their departure, there were thunders and lightning and a loud trumpet blast, and the Lord came down on Mount Sinai, and heavens did bow down and the earth shake. According to Hebrew tradition, all nations heard the roaring of the law-giving that heralded the start of the seventh world age. Worlds in Collision, Part 1, Chapter 4, Last Sentence of Section Mount Sinai. Analysis of the planet's orbits Prior to the Exodus, Venus had an elliptic orbit with its perihelion inside Earth's orbit and aphelion inside the asteroid belt. The asteroid belt would have lost its coherence if Venus had ever come close to it. The Japanese myth called the Sun Goddess, an impetuous male, suggests that the asteroid belt is the afterbirth material following Venus's birth from Jupiter. When Venus passed ahead of Earth towards its perihelion, it must have been traveling slightly slower than Earth. Venus must have also been traveling close to the ecliptic plane to have had three or more months of continuous exodus event activity from entering the tail of the comet to the law giving. The Venus orbit now is at 3.4 degrees inclination to that plane. Earth had passed right through the tail of the comet and the fall of the meteorites and fire had ceased before its closest approach when the Lord passed over. It seemed likely, therefore, that during the days of darkness, 
Earth was eclipsed by Venus, which had passed its perihelion and was beginning to move away from the sun. Venus may have been close enough to obscure up to 10 degrees of the sky, or 20 times more than our moon. It must have been electromagnetic forces that increased the orbit of Earth and reduced that of Venus after they came close enough. Velikovsky suggested a cataclysmic thunderbolt at the time of the crossing, but while there is no mention of this in the book of Exodus, we think the exchange of charge as the Lord passed over may have seen the carving of the Grand Canyon. Wall Thornhill suggested in the SIS Review 2000 that massive interplanetary electrical discharges carved out the Grand Canyon on Earth and the Valles Marineris on Mars, and later attributed the formation of Norwegian fjords to interplanetary discharges. Logic suggests that Earth was forced into a longer orbit and Venus a shorter one. Both planets would then have continued to orbit the Sun in the same direction and same plane. Then Earth would have overtaken Venus again at the time of the crossing. Once again, Earth was forced into a longer orbit and Venus a shorter one. Velikovsky says that Jewish tradition maintains that the Sun changed its course four times between the Exodus and the law giving. That implies the orbits of the planets were forced apart or changed both on the 16th day of the second month when the head reappeared in the clouds, as well as at the time of the law-giving. After the law-giving, Earth and Venus were both in new orbits, but in overcast conditions. The valley of death, so it was several years before Moses could determine the, quote, secrets of the calendar, year length, pole position, etc., Blazing material and manna fell from the sky. Much of the tail of the comet was captured by Earth's gravity when it plunged through it. The tail included Venus's atmospheric gases as well as dust and larger debris. The atmosphere is now thought to be 96% carbon dioxide and 3.5% nitrogen and less than 1% of sulfur, water, and argon. We now know that the tail of a comet is a plasma effect and it is always facing away from the sun. Thus, when Venus was in very close conjunction with the Earth, which was enveloped in its active coma, we can surmise that there would be much interaction between Earth's upper atmosphere with gases and particles in Venus's tail. These must have produced petroleum products that were then ignited by electrical discharges. Later, edible starches and sugars were produced high in the atmosphere by polymerization of formaldehyde. The irradiation of mixture of carbon dioxide, hydrogen, carbon monoxide, and water vapor during the day could produce the formaldehyde, and polymerization could occur at night when the temperature dropped. If manna was produced throughout the time the Valley of Death conditions continued, it is clear that it took many years for Earth's atmosphere to recover from its capture of much of Venus's tail. The reappearance of manna, or honey, in the stories of Samson and Jonathan suggest that the contamination was repeated in later times when the Earth passed through the plasma-laden magnetotail of Venus, even though the orbits would have been more circular by then, and separation distance would have been greater. Any such contamination must cast doubt on the carbon-14 dating in biblical times. Reversal of the location of the angel of the Lord in heavens, hurricane force winds, and retreating seas, we must now reference Peter Warlow's book, The Reversing Earth, Dent 1982, where he explains how Earth can be inverted without any change of its rotation. During the inversion, hurricane force winds would be experienced along the axis of the inversion, but there would be none at 90 degrees to that axis. The centrifugally raised equatorial bulge would be affected by the inversion, but water could not keep pace, and at some point, the vector of centrifugal force would reverse and with it, the direction of water flow. After the inversion, everything seen in the heavens would be reversed, with the sun rising in the west and setting in the east. The seasons would also change, with summer becoming winter and winter becoming summer. Ocean currents will also reverse. It is without question that Earth experienced very large external electromagnetic forces during the four close approaches of Venus during the Exodus event. 
At the same time, Venus, when close enough to cause an inversion, must also have caused massive tidal effects. A strong west wind reported during the days of darkness can be attributed to an inversion, which over three days would create a wind speed of well over 100 miles per hour. 180 degrees in 72 hours is 2.5 degrees an hour, and a degree of latitude is approximately 60 miles. The report about the angel of the Lord changing station in the heavens and the retreat and subsequent return of the sea at the time of the crossing can also be attributed to a second inversion. Velikovsky said that according to a Hebrew tradition, quote, the sun did not proceed on its course during the day of passage. The strong wind did not change direction. The points of the compass changed so that the west became the east and the west wind became an east wind. There may have been a third inversion the next time the comet came close to Earth, but there is no clear evidence of it. The most convincing evidence that an inversion happened at the time of the law giving is that this event saw the beginning of a new world age. Every new world age was supposed to have a new sun, when it traveled in the opposite direction to the old sun, or when the year had a very different number of days. Velikovsky mentioned a Hebrew tradition that the motion of the sun was disturbed during the law giving, only a few lines after his report of the same thing during the passage. Nature of the forces involved. We can be confident that it must be an electromagnetic force that prevented the planets colliding because gravity is always a force of attraction. The gravitational attraction of Venus at the time of the crossing would have had a massive tidal effect, but the reports about the change of direction of the high winds at the same time as changes in location of things in the heavens suggests there was almost certainly an inversion at this time. Velikovsky suggested that the heaped up waters fell after tremendous electrical discharge was exchanged between Venus and Earth, but a reversal of the inversion induced seawater flow provides a better explanation. The Exodus story implies that Earth and Venus closed with one another four times and were forced apart four times. The force that drove them apart must have been electromagnetic. The Ages of the Patriarchs the four encounters from the Exodus to the law giving would appear to have approximately doubled the length of the year, as the ages at death of the patriarchs prior to the Exodus were approximately twice the traditional biblical age of, quote, three score years and ten. Ishmael lived to be 137 years old. Isaac died at 180 years old. He was very old when he died. Jacob lived to be 147 years. Joseph lived to be 110 years. As he had great-grandchildren, 110 might be how long he lived in Egypt. Levi lived to be 137 years. Kohath, 133. Amran, 137. And after the Exodus, Aaron lived to be 123, lived for 40 years after the Exodus. Moses died at 120. He lived for 40 years after the Exodus. Joshua died at 110. He was a young man when sent to spy out the land of milk and honey. The average age today is 80 years of life. This gives an idea of the size of the planets and where we are. Pay particular notice to the density difference of Pluto on the right and Mercury on the left. Photographs from NASA show both planets are very obviously rocky, and we would expect them to have a similar density. How can our calculations be so wrong? In a lecture by Wall Thornhill, he says mass can be changed by charge, and therefore the density can change. It could explain why Pluto is much, much lighter than astronomers expected. This is a developing science, and nothing is proven yet. It's got to be put to laboratory tests.